Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me today. Today I would like to share with you a card that I created from Party Panda's stamp set. I'm going to be masking some images to create a group of stamped images today. The easiest way that I mask images in my projects is to start with a pad of some sticky notes. They have many different names at the store when you purchase them. But first, I will stamp and fussy cut however many of these little masks that I feel I need for the project. Then I'm going to kind of decide how I want to place them by actually putting them together in a grouping. Once I have a vision of what I would like for my project, then the first image that gets stamped is the image that you want to stay in the front. So it's going to stay in the front and be protected by a piece of paper so that all of the other items behind this are going to appear as if they're behind your first image. So if you want to create a crowd of donuts, then you would first stamp where your front donut is and cover it with a mask and then consequently do that and keep stamping and keep stamping as I'm doing here with the panda bears. These pandas are nice sized for masking. They're not too much trouble to cut out and I can reuse these masks any number of times until they fall apart, which could be soon, but maybe they'll make a couple of cards. So I have planned out exactly how I want this to look but I've still allowed myself some flexibility as you can see me futzing over exactly how and where I want to place all these pandas. I want them to appear as they are in a group, but I also want to make them look like individuals to where they're all not going to be standing in the same pose or have the same footing. So in the very back, there's that different panda from Party Pandas. And it looks like he's kind of waving his hands, saying, don't forget about me. <laughs> I imagine this is one of my crazy little kids. So since this image is black and white, and there will remain a, a tremendous amount of black and white in this design, I'm using a journaling pen from Stampin' Up to complete some of those lines that might not have actually made contact with the paper. So that would happen because I'm using a mask and stamping on top of it, and it could be a few layers. So I'm just connecting some of those drawn stamp lines to make it look like each panda is a continuous line of stamping. Stampin' Blend's alcohol markers are perfect for shading in and adding a little bit of color to the pandas. So I'm using the Smoky Slate marker, and this is the light Smoky Slate, to go around the areas that are white and give them a bit of a gray shadow. There's a couple of ways to accomplish this. One way was just as I did to lay down the gray directly in the areas that I would like it. And another way that I oftentimes add some shading is to first use the color lifter, which is clear alcohol ink, and add the gray over it, which will cause the gray to move around and not just sit still. So it gives me a bit of a more hazy effect. I'm using the light cherry cobbler on all of those little hearts that are on the envelopes. And on the hat for the panda in the back, I've used a couple of colors that are going to coordinate with the colors of cardstock layer that I'm using on the project. To give a look of confetti, there is a stamp, but I chose to use some of those same markers and just dot them on. And to make it appear as if these pandas are not just standing in outer space, I gave them a little grounding look, and I'm going to write a message in those little envelopes. They're just the right size to add a few letters. And because this card is destined for my husband, 
I wrote HB, meaning happy birthday to you, dad. So this would be my, all my, you know, my kids. <laughs> so in giving each panda an individual look, I added a hand-drawn bow to the panda on the outside, and I gave some rosy cheeks in different places to each panda. That way they will not all appear to be exactly the same bear. They'll be just a little bit different from each other and maybe help their facial expressions stand out from one another. I'm mounting this panel onto a piece of lemon lime twist and a piece of tranquil tide. So this is going to give me a couple of colors that are distraction from the black and white without actually taking over the design. The fine tip glue pen dotted on is perfect to hold some of Dazzling Diamond's glitter on the top of the page, on the top of the card front. Just enough sparkle there, because remember this is for Guy, but we still want to make him feel special. The inside of the card has that little jumping panda again for an accent. I hope you've enjoyed this card making tutorial and that you will try masking in one of your next projects. I would love to hear how it came out for you, so please feel free to leave a comment on this video or over at my blog at jennystampsup.com. While you're there, click on Shop Now to do all of your Stampin' Up! supply shopping. Thank you so much for choosing me as your online demonstrator. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!